Hey there, today we are going to be filling our freezer with 15 slow cooker freezer meals. And the best part about these freezer meals is they require very minimal to no effort at all to make. So seriously, anybody could do this, I promise. They're pretty much just like dump and go. And these freezer meals are perfect because on busy days when you don't really know what you're going to cook for dinner, all you have to do is throw one into your slow cooker and then by the end of the day you have a warm delicious meal to serve onto your table. So let's go get started. Before we begin, I do want to show you a couple tips and tricks that I like to use. So I always buy these gallon freezer bags. Freezer bags are the best bags to buy when you do freezer meals, just because they're a lot more sturdy. And then I use these baggy clips. They hold your Ziploc bags up like this. So it is so easy to prepare your freezer meals. I'll make sure to link these in my Amazon store for you. They are very inexpensive and they're amazing. But if you don't have those baggy hooks you could just put a bag in a big bowl like this and it will work just fine to prepare your meals in. To kick us off today, we are making these amazing queso chicken tacos. So the first thing that I always do when I prep is I label the bag. So I label what date it is that I prepped these meals on and then what the meal is, how long to slow cook it for, and then what to serve it with after it is through cooking. So these are all the ingredients you are going to need. Of course, you're going to need chicken. I'm using frozen chicken. I find that my favorite way of using chicken for these freezer meals is using frozen chicken because you don't have to touch fresh chicken and it's just easier. And then taco seasoning, rotel, and queso. We're making double batches of all of these recipes today. I actually made a triple batch of one of them, but we're mostly doing double batches and I do suggest you doing double batches when you do do freezer meals just because it makes it a lot easier and cheaper. So I added two big chicken breasts to each of the bags. Now go ahead and add about a tablespoon and a half of taco seasoning in each of the bags at this point as well, along with one undrained can of Rotel. Then the very last ingredient we are adding in each of the bags is a jar of queso. Of course, you could use any brand of queso you like or have on hand. And then you will seal these bags up, remove any air in the bags, and then there you go. These two freezer meals are done. It can't get any easier than this. Just so you could have a really good clear idea on how to serve these, after the chicken is through cooking in my slow cooker, I shred it up and then I serve it in tortillas with cheese, sour cream, lime, cherry tomatoes, and avocado. Now we're making this classic chicken and gravy. So to get this one started, these are the ingredients you'll need. Of course, chicken breast, I'm using frozen, and then a can of cream of chicken soup. If you don't care for cream of chicken soup, you could use any other cream of soup you like. Ranch seasoning and then brown gravy mix. So into my freezer bags, I'm adding two big chicken breasts in each of them. Next, you are going to add in one can of cream of chicken soup in each of the bags, and then you are going to add half of your packet of the dry brown gravy mix in each of the bags and then lastly you'll add in a tablespoon of ranch seasoning mix. Another tip that I do find helpful that I like doing is when a recipe like this one just calls for water, I like to just write down the amount of water to add right as you're adding this into your slow cooker just so you don't have to put water in these freezer bags. It does make it a lot easier. So after our chicken and gravies through cooking in the slow cooker, I like to shred it up and serve it over either mashed potatoes, egg noodles, or rice. Now we're prepping these fall apart tender barbecue chicken drumsticks. The drumsticks that I like using for this recipe, it's this four pound frozen bag. I really like this bag because you're able to fit between five to six drumsticks in each of your two freezer meals. And then I just used leftover barbecue sauce from my refrigerator. What really does make these drumsticks out of this world good is this dry rub recipe. So in this bowl, I have a half a cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of 
paprika, a teaspoon of pepper and salt, a tablespoon of garlic powder and onion powder, and then a teaspoon of ground mustard. Stir this seasoning mixture together. After we added our chicken in the bags, I added half of our dry rub seasoning mixture in each of the bags. Now you're going to go ahead and add about a cup and a half of barbecue sauce. Any barbecue sauce will work. I do want to show you what I love doing with our chicken after it's out of the slow cooker. Of course, you could eat the chicken just like this and it will still be amazing, but what I like doing is placing it on a sheet pan and then drizzling about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of barbecue sauce on each of the chicken legs and then I brush it on and then I place this under my broiler in my oven for about a minute or two to make that barbecue sauce nice and caramelized. And there you go. Now we have the most perfect, fall apart, tender, extremely flavorful barbecue chicken legs. Now we're making the easiest ever meatball subs. So to begin with this one, you will need two two pound bags of frozen meatballs. I'm using the Italian style meatballs because they do provide a lot of great flavor. And then you'll need two jars of marinara pasta sauce. Of course, you could use any type of marinara sauce you love. And then go ahead and grab your seasonings. I'm using Italian seasoning, onion powder, and garlic powder. So to begin in each of our freezer bags, I'm adding one of the two pound bags of Italian style meatballs and then you'll go ahead and pour the jar of marinara sauce in each of the bags and then season it up really well with your seasonings about half a teaspoon of onion powder and garlic powder and then a teaspoon of the Italian seasoning. Since these meatballs are fully cooked, all you're doing in the slow cooker is warming them through. So after they're warmed through, we like to place our meatballs and marinara sauce inside of hoagie rolls with plenty of mozzarella cheese. And then we like to stick it under our broiler for about one to two minutes to melt the cheese. And then there you go. You have such an easy dinner to serve onto your table. This is a really, really easy meal to meal prep. Now we're prepping this Italian chicken. This recipe is full of flavor, I promise. So of course you'll need your chicken. I'm, I'm using the chicken breasts that are frozen. And then you'll need a packet of zesty Italian seasoning for each of the bags. So if you don't have zesty Italian seasoning at your store, these are the ingredients that are in the seasoning packet. I know a lot of people are dealing with shortages in their store right now with different products. And then you'll need eight ounces of cream cheese total and a can of cream of chicken for each of the bags. So in each of our bags, I'm adding a couple large chicken breasts right in there. Next, go ahead and add your four ounces of cream cheese in each of the bags, so eight ounces total, and then your can of cream of chicken, and then your Italian seasoning packet. Typically, whenever I want to enjoy one of our slow cooker meals, I just let it thaw overnight in the refrigerator. So then when the next morning comes, everything's thawed out perfectly. And then I could just toss everything into my slow cooker. And then by the end of the day, we have a wonderful meal to enjoy. This Italian chicken is great shredded over egg noodles. Now we're making these Philly cheesesteaks. So the first ingredient that I'm using is this beef bottom round steak. I like to buy this from my butcher like this. It's already sliced thinly, so it makes everything really simple. And then you will need beef broth along with Worcestershire sauce, garlic powder, and steak seasoning. For the vegetables, I grabbed this big bag of pepper and onions, and it's a really simple way. You don't have to prep as many vegetables that way if you grab a frozen bag. And then I'm also using mushrooms. You don't want your veggies to go mushy in this recipe, so you'll go, you're going to add them in for the last like 30 minutes of cooking. So you'll put the vegetables in a little quart size bag and then place them in your big gallon size bag so you could add them in later. Go ahead and slice your mushrooms into smaller pieces at this point. And 
to our smaller quart size bags, I'm adding the mushrooms and then go ahead and add about a cup to a cup and a half of the frozen vegetable mixture. I set our smaller veggie bags to the side, now into our larger gallon bags. Add your steak, next add a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce in each of the bags, and then you are going to be adding a half a tablespoon of steak seasoning in each of the bags. Any type of steak seasoning you wanna use will work out well. And then about half a teaspoon of garlic powder in each of the bags, three fourths cup of beef broth, and then you will add the vegetable mixture bags right in there, seal it up and that's all you have to do. Very similar to what we did with the meatball subs, but after our Philly cheesesteak mixture was through cooking in the slow cooker, I like to place a couple scoops in hoagie rolls, and then I like to place slices of provolone cheese over the top. I put this under my broiler in the oven for a couple of minutes to melt the cheese, and then they are ready to enjoy. One recipe that's always a go-to when I prep is taco soup, just because it comes out so, so flavorful, and I'm a huge taco soup fan. So you'll want to use ground beef. I used a total of two pounds of ground beef, pinto beans, kidney beans, rotel, corn, and then you'll either wanna use diced green chilies, like what I did, this little can, or you could use sliced jalapenos, whatever you prefer, and then ranch seasoning and taco seasoning. Over to my pan, I added our two pounds of ground beef. Go ahead and break it up. I'm using my meat masher. This meat masher is amazing. If you don't have one, you need one. But after our ground beef was cooked, I removed any excess grease and then I let it cool down and then I placed half of the ground beef in each of our bags. Next, add about a tablespoon and a half of taco seasoning in along with a tablespoon of our ranch seasoning. And then you are going to add all of your cans in. None of these cans are drained and none of them are rinsed. So our green chilies, our rotel, our corn, our kidney beans, and then our pinto beans. If you're wondering how long these freezer meals will last in your freezer, it's typically around three months, of course, give or take some, but after our taco soup was out of the slow cooker, I topped mine with cheese, lettuce, cilantro, cherry tomatoes, and sour cream. This taco soup's full of flavor. I know you'll love it. I have so many more videos like this on my channel, so make sure you subscribe down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.